Who is this super YouTuber? Is it Paul, the Joy Toy Collector? Andy, the Newcastle United fan? Jamie, the Gobot hater? Alexis, the salesman? Rohan, the man with the plan and the wall of fame? Might just be... Rohan's Corner, Super Transformers guy. Rohan's Corner, poking Hasbro in the eye. Oh, he's so fly, a groovy guy with a beard that just won't stop. When the bots get rough, he's super tough as third party cleans up. Rohan's Corner, Super Transformers guy. Rohan's Corner, poking Hasbro in the eye. Hey there guys, welcome back to Rohan's Corner and this week on the show we are talking about the one, the very only MicroMasters! and MicroMaster Battle Stations. They connect and transform to make whole incredible cities. MicroMaster Transformers are not just small. Transformers. MicroMaster Transformers. Yes, these diddly little Transformers that came out around 1987-1988 are very much a part of the Transformers franchise these days, especially with the resurgence of them back in the War for Cybertron trilogy and I wanted to just pick up on the point that back in 1987, 1988 when they first came out Transformers was going through a bit of a dull patch. We'd had some fantastic years 1984 85 86 of huge sales huge attraction in the boys toys category huge response from the cartoon series huge backlash from the movie and then season three season four was not doing well at this stage, Hasbro and Takara needed to shake things up a little, and they had the balls to try new things. We had the Target Masters, we had the Head Masters, we had the Action Masters, we had the Micro Masters, heck, we had the Power Masters, and any other Masters you can think of. Masters of the Universe, too. But, ultimately, these sort of trial and error attempts by Hasbro to breathe new life into the Transformers line weren't successful. However, there's something to be said about these miniature figures that transform with absolute ease. And here I have a G1 MicroMaster in hand. Don't ask me for the name. I don't know the name. And it can be transformed in one, two, three, four moves if you do the legs together. This is stiff as you can imagine and there's something just satisfying about the simplicity uh, but the alt mode actually looks decent unlike the core class where a lot of their alt modes don't look decent and a lot of their alt mo robot modes don't look decent at least with this guy his alt mode looks decent even if his robot mode leaves a lot to be desired it does still re resemble the robot and there's a lot of similarities between the G1 MicroMasters and also the War for Cybertron MicroMasters, which are not quite as good as other lines that we've had, like the likes of World's Smallest Transformers. Who remembers these? They actually line up quite in scale with one another, so if you wanted to, you could have your entire line of Transformers G1 characters in MicroMaster scale. How cool is that? Although they never actually finished the entire line and a lot of third parties did make a couple of the figures. But anywho, let's not go down that rabbit hole. But the influence for all of this, where did it come from? I mean, Hasbro originally brought Transformers over from Takara because Takara had done some complex designs to create a robot out of a vehicle, transforming along the way. However... Hasbro had never really done any simplistic toys, except for maybe the 123 Transformers, which are a completely separate line for little children, which came out around 1987, and I've done a video on this in the past. But I'll tell you a line of robots that were simple to transform and were cheap and cheerful, 
and that was the GoBots. Although a couple of them may not seem to be the most simplistic in design, here we have Turbo. You pull out his legs, you pull out his arms, and you flip up his head. And there you've got Turbo and Robot Mode. Very much like a MicroMaster, in fact, probably about the same number of steps. Of course, some GoBots were more complex, and some were more expensive. But for the most part, the seven, six, couple of quid price point was pretty much in line with MicroMasters. And they had die-cast, and they had much better detailing. Okay, they were a few years earlier, and inflation may have been around at that time. I don't remember. I was a, a little baby. But... There is something to be said about these simplistic transforming figures. And we see that in the new core class range, it kind of divides opinion. Some are really good, some are not so good. Some really good ones like Soundwave and some not so good ones like the Dinobots. And then at the same time, we have the new Earth Spark one step changes, two step, blah, 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 little bot thingies, all the rest of it. And some of them are shocking, those little bots that are $8.99 from Game and Likes, it's just a little box, finger puppets, you know, it, they look horrible. Uh, the one step changes don't look too bad, the deluxes look alright. So there is something to be said for simplistic Transformers, as long as the aesthetics are still there, and as long as they still look like the characters, uh, in my opinion. What do you all think? I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode, a micro episode on Transformers MicroMasters. Thank you for joining me back to the studio. Transformers, Rohan's in disguise.